What's up, hobby friends, and welcome back to Paint Bravely, the podcast where you can find a little bit of encouragement, discover new ways to make your hobby more fun, and most importantly, learn to paint bravely. Or in this case, travel the country bravely, or go to the zoo bravely, lots of things, lots of things going on. A lot of hobby things, a lot of fun trip things. We'll, we'll, we'll get into it. But uh, I want to check in with Brent. You've been gone for the last week. You've been up in Canada, the Great White North, taking a tour, doing a bunch of uh, like mini painting stuff. Uh-huh. What's up? <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm coming to you with news from Canada. I went to the mini war game in Bunker. Uh, I went to go see Ash at Gorilla Miniature Games. I went to see the workshop of Eric's Hobby Workshop. I met Eric. Not for the first time, right. <laughs> not for the last. <laughs> and then I went to go see Dana Howell, and in between, I mean, there was uh, Epic Doc Studios was in there. A little Scarry from the Scarred Cast was made an appearance. Like it was a, it was a lovely little trip. So, figure we can talk about that a little bit. Fill some, fill some podcast time here. I think so. I mean that's yeah. that's a pretty big trip. That's that's a lot of stops. <laughs> like more than more than most people make. You let's seem to like do the tour like make the rounds. Yeah, Canada is a huge country, but it turns out the people only live in a couple little pockets of it. Uh, that makes except sense, for yeah. except for Jeremy who lives <laughs> in a stupid place. Yeah. Oh, Neil Real Terrain Hobbies lives in a stupid place. <laughs> Where it's colder and dumber. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Old JT Stark, Berserker Works, live in a, a very stupid place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. But, yeah, so so Dave at Mini War Gaming invited me to, to go see the bunker, and that is essentially a, a bed and breakfast. I don't recall any breakfasts, but it's <laughs> it's like a... You buy your own breakfast. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I didn't starve. I didn't that's good. Starve. That's good. I I bought a lot of Canadian candy bars, mm. so I had Arrow bars, Coffee Crisps, I had something called a Flake, and then I bought a lot of Canadian potato chips. I had pickle flavor, ketchup flavor, right. um, you know, as you do. Uh, yeah, yeah. Man, so, I've never never been into into the the ketchup flavor. Can't do it. It was all right, you yeah. know. When in Canada. Right, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> when in Canada. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, the bunker is a, a, a small, is a minor mecca of, of the hobby world. Mm-hmm. It is, uh, yeah, like I said, bed and breakfast. They have five themed rooms there. Mm-hmm. So I was in the Imperial Officer room, oh. which is, you know, kind of generic Imperium 40K kind of themed. Mm-hmm. Some some cool artwork on the wall. There was like a power sword on the wall, not neat. a power sword, a chain sword, whatever. Um, Generic power sword for the lawyers. It's all the same. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> and yeah, so there was that, and then it that is connected to the bunker, which is where they do all of the the filming for Mini War Gaming's battle reports, and so. I want to say there's like four rooms where they film battle reports there. There was also a big common area for kind of like free play, basically. Uh, it's where they run uh, you know, small tournament events or just people come in there and play games. Mm-hmm. So it is uh, it is a location that I had seen in YouTube videos many, many times. And with that sort of thing, it's always just interesting to see how the... Uh, various locations connect and relate to one another. Right, for sure. Uh, you know, kind of put it all together in, in your mental map. Get the, yeah, exactly. Uh, Get that, that mental map. So when you watch the video, you're like, oh, yeah, yeah let's go around the corner. I know where that yeah. is. Yep, <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Right. <laughs> wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a place that I think a lot of people want to end up getting to at some point. And, I mean, it it's kind of just open, isn't it? You can just go there and like, I, I assume you'd have to call ahead for a room or something, but you know. Yeah. 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 They, they rent out the rooms. I don't know how full their booking schedule is, sure. but they, they rent out the rooms. That's, that's the purpose of the place. 
And yeah. something I, I, I hadn't realized before is that if you're a guest and you bring your own army and it's a good looking army and you know how to play and you arrange it ahead of time, mm -hmm. you can just be one of the guests in one of their battle reports. Oh, cool. And I, I didn't realize that, but apparently that's just one of the things that the guests do that, that pretty, pretty regularly. I mean, it yeah, certainly we, plays into like making content, you know, it's like, yep. Hey, let's just, uh, yep. get a whole bunch of cool people and cool armies and do stuff. Yeah. Uh, did you bring an army? No, 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 no. no. Of course no. not. You didn't pack any Saurus warriors or anything? No. I did not. What a shame. I, I brought some Necromunda gangers just in case <laughs> Eric wanted to, to play some Necromunda. He he likes yeah. that. And I brought some Relic Blade dudes, some Moldorfs, my dwarfs. Oh, yeah, you've been painting those up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I brought those and did actually get to play a game against Ash. Nice. Like real miniature mm -hmm. games. Do you see his new yeah. studio? I did. So it's Ash's new studio is his old studio, <laughs> but expanded oh, right, into yeah. like the, the room next door. Yeah. But at least two of those rooms are looking real nice and clean right now. And then plus he's got a whole bunch of extra space also. Very cool. So, uh, yeah, he was he was showing me some of the plans that he has for that space. So, yeah, much uh, much much smaller than the mini war gaming bunker, but Ash gets stuff done in there. Yeah, he he gets a lot of stuff done, and uh, he <laughs> paints a lot of stuff. And I don't know where he keeps half that stuff. He's he's got a pile. <laughs> he's got a pile. It's just a pile. <laughs> No, he's been building shelves. So this is Gorilla Miniature Games, a YouTube channel that does pretty much daily content. Yeah. Whether it's uh, interviews with some, uh, you know, game designers and stuff like that, or battle reports, or reviews of products. Um, he's got a system, and and he cranks. Yeah. Uh, so, so I was I was at the Gorilla Miniature Games studio for. I don't know, three and a half hours, something like that. Mm -hmm. And Ash and I did some recording and he's, he got two videos out of me. I don't know if he'll, <laughs> he'll uh, end up, uh, you know, neatening them up and publishing them or not, but I mean, that's, we that's did pretty uh, good for three and a half hours. That's Man, pretty I, good for three and a half hours. I wish I could hours. do that. Yeah. <laughs> right. We need to sit down and maybe have a conversation about how to make videos. <laughs> Well, so we did a we did a sit down and have a conversation, but turn on the cameras. And right. He was all set up to just uh, flick a couple of switches, and there's the cameras and good audio right there. And so we just did a you know, kind of little podcast interview conversation between Ash and I. Um, and then after that, we played a game of Relic Blade. And Relic Blade... I have now read the rule book two, two and a half, half times, times for Relic yeah. Book. For Relic <laughs> Blade. And it is simple enough that I was able to not slow the game down. And Ash is very good at doing battle reports on the fly. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, he just turned on the cameras. We did a one take, no cuts shot of a game of Relic Blade. Took us about half an hour. It was actually a really good game, like a really close game. Some fun stuff happened, and uh, yeah, uh, Ash Ash has a system down. He knows what he's yeah. doing. <laughs> Man, it's nice. I still haven't played Relic Blade. It's still like one of those things. Like I bought the terrain finally. I got all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Just haven't gotten to it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you're new to Paint Bravely, the podcast, Relic Blade is this cute little skirmish game, normally about four characters on a side. It's played on a two foot by two foot mat. There's normally a good bit of terrain there with like little platforms and bridges and stuff like that. And all of the characters are just cartoony and cute and delightful. Yeah. And... It was nice to to actually get another game in. That was that was great. Yeah, I mean, you're already you've now played multiple games. Yeah, look yeah. at me. In in a couple of days. None of this like once every couple of years thing. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I don't need to play another game for, for months at this point. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Years. Years. <laughs> yeah. Just get back to painting. I mean, to be fair, yeah, there's a lot to, to paint, so, you know, it's fine. <laughs> You've been painting? Uh, I've been painting a little bit, yeah. Painting, painting some orcs for the old uh, Orktober, you know, that, that yearly tradition. Um, painting a cool orc that I bought this weirdo conversion off of eBay. And I just took like this base kind of dinky conversion and like, you know, tripled its size and added a bunch more crap onto it and painted that. And that was cool. Um, and I've been working on this, uh, orc chaos Knight conversion. Um, that's going to be like the big project for the month. And I finally, like, I'm now in a, I feel like I'm in a good place now, but it didn't, it didn't exactly start off good. Um, so I'm sure you've heard of the, the company Cromlech. They sell all sorts of resin bits and models and heads and all these things for tons of different types of models. Uh, but they specialize in orc, right? I think so. They they do seem to have quite a lot of it. A lot of orcs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's I th- probably because uh, orcs are kind of the most, uh, I don't know, open IP, I guess you could say. Most kit bashy. Yeah. Like, like Easiest you can, to put some hop- pirate heads Yeah, you on can things. make whatever you yeah. want out of it, and it's all good. Um, so, yeah, they, they definitely have a lot of orcs, but... Uh, in preparation for this month's kind of larger video, I went ahead on the Cromlech and I ordered a good $120 in modeling stuff from them, you know, had it shipped from Poland. It's very excited. And when it got here, uh, it turns out I ordered, uh, a sprue of resin muffler pipes and right. like... Or like six, seven kits of MDF. Uh, <laughs> How? How did that happen? <laughs> no, I feel like I got screwed over. I don't know. Like, I guess I just didn't read it properly, but I was in this whole section of like picking out bits for this, this model. And I'm like, oh man, I got all these cool ideas and I want these like different head options and I want these weapon options. And I'm, I mean, I went all out, right? I was like, I'm going to put money into this because... I want this to be cool. And then it and then it came in the mail and it's just like this flat box. I'm like that there's no way. You know, and then I'm looking at like I open it up and and it's like this kind of shredded paper for packaging and I'm like what is everything broken? It looks like it's going to be broken and it turns out it's like this thin layer of MDF that's like the size of a a book. Um to be fair, the the actual MDF kits are pretty neat, but it's not exactly resin that I wanted. And I'm so you thought you thought you were getting like gun arms for a knight, yeah. Titan sort yeah, of thing? and I mean they're they're a little bit bigger because okay. they're meant for their like large uh, Stompa ripoff models. Uh, I did end up putting the head together. And, like, out of MDF, it's pretty nice. Like, it is, yeah, it isn't that's bad not at all. Bad. And, it, I mean, it's very 3D. It doesn't look like completely like MDF. I mean, it, it is. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, <laughs> I'm a little bit uh, annoyed still. Um, and, and that, that really, that really sucked, sucked all the fun out of this week. Like, I basically didn't get work done for like the, the first couple of days this week because I'm like what the hell am I going to do like I, I have I have no project I have nothing so I was kind of freaking out you spent a day building a, a stomp basically I, I did I sat I sat there for okay. like two hours and I put the stupid <laughs> head together and I, I'm still super annoyed I thought maybe okay maybe I'm just you know maybe they look better than I'm thinking and yeah mm-hmm. they do but they, man you, you couldn't put that on top of like a games workshop model and pass that even for an orc. I, I can't do it. 
Um, yeah. Yeah. It, it's not good. That's a different type of video. <laughs> That's a different type. Of... <laughs> yeah. So, so I can't. I mean, some people do like MDF. Oh, sure. I mean, I think for terrain, it's fantastic. You could use it for terrain. I could. It's just a giant head. I can just set it on the table. It's great. Yeah. You just bought $120 of uh, MDF terrain. Yeah. You know how long it took me to like actually go and buy the relic blade terrain? I mean, it was like like what two years. I was like, I had it in the cart. I would go and check. You know, it's one of those you know frequent things that I would just look at and be like, oh, maybe maybe next week you know, you know mm-hmm. save up a little do something and it's like a hundred bucks and i mean yeah i finally did it and and that's all sitting in a pile still i haven't put any of it together um is it pre-painted yes and no it's like different color mdf a little bit i don't okay. want to say yeah, so it's not it's not pre painted. Right. I don't think. Re- report back when you've put together some relic blade MDF yeah, terrain yeah. from Black Side Studio. Yeah, yeah, I'll get there. I'll get there. Right. Um, unfortunately, that there aren't instructions in it, so that's partially why it's just been kind of sitting. You can get them on on their website, but like it's just not it's not quite the same. The, these Cromlet kits actually had decent instructions. Um, mm-hmm. So you know, again, I guess like my fault but i'm still pissed because mm. it's like man it's like getting a book for your birthday you know like it's yeah yeah, yeah when not what you were not what you were expecting when you were opening up that box yeah yeah and it is your fault and i'm sure some people worked really hard on designing and manufacturing uh-huh. and and boxing up those kids oh, yeah. i'm sure i'm sure when they were and, boxing uh, them up they're like oh he's gonna like this he's gonna love he, it this is gonna, gonna be so it. look at all these awesome yeah. mdf weapons and this cool looking yeah. stomp ahead and all these th- oh it's gonna be good yeah. and then yeah yeah, you're uh, gonna you're gonna put them all together and make a video called Orc Trash Pile, and it's just <laughs> gonna be a, just a bunch of garbage, like like a pile of uh, old <laughs> broken weapons and an, and an orc landfill. That and, yeah, uh, exactly. And, and you will have shopped so carefully for oh. each one of the weapons in that pile. <laughs> oh man, yeah. So I don't know that that really uh, that got to me a little bit, but. Um, I found this, I found this like night Titan on eBay. Um, and I, I bought it cause it had this like weird orc conversion. They took one of those like caged space marine mech suits and just kind of like glued it to the top of the, the carapace of the, the Titan. And they're like, yep, that, okay. that's an orc kit now. And they just like cut the head off the, the space marine and put an orc head on it. <laughs> and they're like, here you go. Oh, and they, and they replaced the face with a gun. They just glued a gun to the face. So, yeah, it, and, and that's what it felt like. You got it. Like, yeah. the, the panels were kind of painted, like, decently, and then there was some checkerboard kind of put on with, like, uh, you could tell they tried to tape it off. Um, but, mm. I, but I messaged the seller pretty quickly after I bought it, and the first response I got back was, I didn't do any of this. This isn't my model. I bought this from someone else. I know what you're going to do with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was this a seller who had heard from you before? No, I, I just, just bought from them and I, I reached okay. out to ask they questions, right? Yeah. Well, cause yeah. I changed my, my eBay username, which kind of, I maybe should change it to something, not my username just in case. Um, Cause I got another response back from someone else that was maybe they were just being an asshole. I'm not sure. Um, but like the dude was like, yeah, I bought this. I wanted to like continue working on it and I just didn't have time. So, you know, I threw it back up on eBay and it's like, yeah, that makes sense. Um, but he was, he definitely yeah. wanted me to make, make sure that, that, uh, I knew that it wasn't his work. So that's the whole thing. Um, the the other model yeah, that Viking I, uh... Viking Lincoln four twenty <laughs> right. on eBay was not responsible exactly. for this exactly. orc conversion. He wanted me yeah. to know <laughs> it's not his handiwork. <laughs> um, the like the other thing that I got that that other like the orc that was on these uh like tank treads kind of and I I made them bigger and did this stuff. 
like in the the description in the video, it's like uh, orc war boss something something, and it doesn't really make sense. So I turn it into something else. But I messaged the seller, and I'm like, "Hey, is there anything you can tell me about this? Like, what what was he being used for? What was the, you know, what was the idea behind this originally?" And their answer was like super short and dickish, and I can't exactly remember what it was, but it was basically like, um, like not new, uh, you know, converted parts or something like something stupid. Yeah. Yeah. See picture. But yeah, basically, it's what it was. Only it's like you're just repeating the Sold thing. Sold as is. Yeah, and it's like picture. Yeah, I I know. I, I, I know. <laughs> like I already bought it from you. I I'm asking a question. Yeah. Um. So I'm thinking about maybe changing my eBay username back to something else so that people don't know. Because I feel like that might cause problems in the future. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, that's a that's a whole level of gamesmanship. I I haven't given a lot of thought. To. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean I'm I'm not trying to like make fun of anybody for sure, but you know people might not want their thing to be in a video. So I don't know. Um. Yes, yeah, so that's that's mostly what I've been painting. Uh, oh, I did I did paint up some sweet goblins. Like I uh. So I ended up finding a bunch of like 3D printable stuff and just printing it out, right? Um, and I found these really cool orc kits from I think it's called Station Forged. All right. I want to say that. So yeah, Station 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 Forge. That sounds right. Pretty sure. Um, but yeah, there's like really cool little goblins that like have tons of personality that I've just never seen before. And it's like for, I, I mean, it's a decently sized, uh, company. It seems they put out a lot of STLs. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Just some of the better orc and goblin models that I've, that I've seen. And, uh, like the, the proportions are good. The like poses are good. Um, mm -hmm. they feel unique, I guess is, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, those are pretty cute. Yeah. They yeah. got some cool faces. The one I painted up last has like no lips, which is a little weird. Uh it's just teeth, all teeth, no lips. Kind of yeah. weird. So so I have a question. Yeah. If instead of spending 120 on MDF kits, if you would use that to buy liquid printer resin, uh, how would you be feeling right now? Feeling a lot better. <laughs> Tell you what. Hey, we all make Tell mistakes. You what? You know, live and learn. Well, the sad thing is, like, I got a new printer, and the resin uh -huh. isn't here yet, so I ended uh -huh. up having to, like, one day ship some, uh, like, the Elegoo 8K stuff, which actually um, I'm going to just switch to now, because now that I've used it, it was such a difference from the, like, any cubic resin that I've been using for so long. Hmm. It was just so much better. And I've been like wondering if it's just me. Turns out it might just be the resin. It just works better. I don't know. Sweet. Um. So yeah, that was kind of a cool like discovery, you know. Um. Yeah, I wish I had not spent $120. I mean, I could probably return most of it. But <laughs> ship it back to Poland. Right, that's the thing. Now, now what? No, I, uh. I feel like you have to keep it. Like that's your shame. You have to figure <laughs> yeah, out something to do with it. Literal pile of shame. Yeah. Like I bought this and yeah. I definitely didn't need to, and now it's that's on a, a shelf. Physical reminder to be careful. Yeah, put, oh. that, put that head, that MDF orc stompa head on top of your computer <laughs> monitor or something so that every time you're internet shopping you <laughs> yeah remember, i'll remember make sure print. <laughs> oh, God. now at this point so i bought the head i bought four different weapon options um like uh, technically i could probably uh just buy the body 
of the thing and actually yeah, just put just it together roll that to a cereal box or <laughs> yeah something. there you go actually yeah. that's a good idea that's a real good idea i got a, i got an empty box of lucky charms around somewhere i could probably uh, Ooh, which which would be funnier lucky <laughs> charms or captain crunch uh mm, cap count chocula oh, uh tricks the tricks rabbit mm, not as funny what all right, you got to go to your local grocery store and figure yeah, out what child works. cereal would be funniest I mean, I f- to do it. I feel like Captain Crunch would work because he's like, he's got sure. the hat and he and he's yeah. kind of on a boat already. And then if you threw on the arms and legs and, and stuff and he here's just Captain Crunch coming at you. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, that'd be pretty funny. I could do that. Yeah, you could do that. <laughs> like, I bought these MDF kits for no reason. Or, like, this is the only the... way to play Warhammer. <laughs> Dude. If that video did well, if a video of just, yeah, a Captain Crunch box with a couple of poorly painted MDF kits oh. stuck to it, and the title, This is the Only Way to Play Warhammer, it's worth a shot. Yeah, you know, I mean, see, that's the kind of video that that's like a back pocket kind of video. That's yeah. a man. I I really need to put something out, and it needs to hit like hard. You know, that's a rainy that's day video. Break glass in yeah, case yeah, yeah. of emergency. Exactly. And behind the glass <laughs> is just the dumbest orc stampa you've ever seen. The, this is, yeah, yeah, that's what that's. It would have to be that. This is the only way to play Warhammer, or this is the dumbest model you've ever seen. And and just go to town on a cereal box and I mean the thing is you have to you have to retain the image on the front of the box. Oh yeah, no, I I'd probably yeah. keep the the box as is. Yeah, and like maybe like try hard paint all the other pieces, you know. Yeah. And then would you build like a serious skeleton? Uh, of like armatures and stuff to go through the box to like uh, support all of the bits and like support the arms sticking out off the side of the box. You probably have to, because I mean, even even mm. the head of this thing, like I could hurt somebody with this. It is a piece of wood. Like, yeah, yeah that's that's painful. Wow, that actually the, hurts. The so. other option is to uh, kind of kind of just like fill the box with sand or something. Ooh. Or or put a slightly a slightly smaller box inside the cereal box and fill that with sand. Sure. Like just give it give, give a little, it a little more rigidity. Yeah, because yeah. it it wouldn't need it. I wouldn't want it to be like stupid, right? Where it's just floppy. Because it would have to right. play on a table. Yes. I mean, there there yes. are a lot of ways you could do that. I mean, you could stack cereal boxes and make yourself a warlord titan. You uh-huh. know. You know what? You, I think you spent a little too much time with Eric because you know you got all these ideas coming in, and <laughs> like it was good to see Eric. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but now, now my mind is gone, and I kind of want to do that. <laughs> like it's just a throwaway video. <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? People make fun of you. People are gonna make People fun. People already of you make anyway. fun of me. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm. I, I'm making fun. I know. Of yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> that head doesn't look too bad, though. It doesn't look too it, bad. It's not bad, although there's a bunch of, like, printed on, you know, texture that, like, as soon as you put paint on this, it's gone. And I it might look yeah. worse after you paint it. But it, like, just looks like a piece of MDF, but it's not bad. It's super confusing. I honestly don't understand, like, the, the intent, I guess. Yeah, hot glue some Cheerios on there and see <laughs> how it goes. Fries. Oh, <laughs> it would work. Yeah, it would too. <laughs> yeah, no, I think that's that's definitely. I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. You're gonna see that video someday, and it's gonna be out of nowhere, and it's just gonna pop up and and it's gonna hit you, and you're gonna be like, oh, when you least expect, something it. bad must be yeah. happening over there for that to come. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's what's gonna happen. Boy, I hope he's okay. Exactly. He's, please, please reach out. If, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, 
Yeah, that's that's what's been going on over here. The B, the B roll is just you looking super stressed and like throwing a cereal box into your shopping cart. <laughs> <laughs> just laying on the horn in the parking lot is the rest of the B roll. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'll do really over the top drone footage chase sequence, you know. Back in the, you know, like the good old days, trying to get my goblins out of the, the mailbox. That that kind of stuff. Gotta get stuff. my, gets, gotta get <laughs> <Yeah>. my <gets. laughs> This is memorable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. No, no. It's going to happen. It's definitely going to happen. Mm-hmm. Oh, whether it's next week or two years from now, I don't know. Depends on when yeah. I crack. <laughs> <laughs> Well, part of me hopes that's nice and soon. I kind of want it to happen now, but yeah. I don't know, man. Like, trying to put this this room back together. I, like, torn everything apart and and fixed up the other side of it. It closed up the the garage door and and all that stuff. So there's, like, I have my own singular room now. It doesn't have a connected room where I kept everything. So it's just all over the floor in here. Like it, it it's mm-hmm. piled. I have piles of modeling stuff, which really shows me how much like I've actually accumulated over the the last like six years. Um, and it's too much. It, it's entirely too much. Um, yeah, I put together a storage cabinet, like a one of those big like black metal storage cabinets, and I filled just the top shelf with magic cards exclusively oh, yeah no. and like oh, didn't no. make a dent in the pile in this room um and then the the subsequent layers are purely kits games workshop kits now stacked and there's there's still shelves filled with kits and crap that's a problem you want to have. I mean, I like it. Don't get me wrong. I open it, and I feel real good. Like, it looks uh-huh. good. Yeah. But it's not good. <laughs> like, it is. And now I got this MDF. I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> like, where do I put that? It doesn't fit. <laughs> so. I don't know where you put that, man. It's, it's an awkward shape, and yeah. it's just going to stare at you until you do something with it. Mm. Well, yeah. It's pointy. It's shameful. Yeah. Well, even the the Relic Blade MDF has been sitting, and I feel like crap every time I look at it. I've covered it since. It's covered in things. I, so I can't really see it. But I know it's there. <laughs> like, I mean, a flat MDF is good for stacking. Yeah. At you least stack all flat. kinds of things on that. And it doesn't yeah. smell anymore. This new MDF brought that, that stank back into the room. Like, I, I knew it, too. As soon as I opened the box, I was like, what is this? It smells like burnt MDF, and yeah, there you go. Mm-hmm. I don't know. There's just a certain scent that's not good. Oh. Well, I live in there. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> I went to Eric's Hobby Workshop and saw the Hobby Workshop. <laughs> Is it an actual workshop? He has a workshop, right? Or is it like his garage? I mean, basement area. Oh, okay. That's yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah. So he's, he's got a little, little, a pretty big corner set aside for the, the workshop and everything. All right. And I got there and he was all set to go with a game of Inquisitor. That's fascinating. Yeah, so that is the 54 millimeter scale uh, Games Workshop game from 2001. I want to say something like that. It's it's an old one at this point. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, it's, it's basically two teams of Inquisitors come together. The Inquisitors and their weirdos come together. Mm-hmm. So arco-flagellants, and you got your servitors and mechanicus guys, and yeah, I think you could have a cherub if you right. wanted you, to. The, the and, flying yeah. mechanical babies. You know, mm-hmm. it's good when they bring in those babies. Yeah, so it's it's that kind yeah. of stuff. It's that kind of stuff. 
and it's it's the game where uh eisenhorn like the artwork for eisenhorn mm-hmm. came from and then it was only later on that it became an actual character in uh you know black library right, books and stuff cool. like that i didn't know that yeah yeah so the I, I mean, I think the name Eisenhorn is in this Inquisitor rulebook, um, and then but the Inquisitor rulebook came out before the Eisenhorn novels, right? So, yeah, nice. yeah, okay. And yeah, the book is is cool. Um, yeah, I painted a, an is. Inquisitor model months ago and ended up looking at the book. I have like the PDFs and all the stuff. Yeah, I went to buy it, and it's still pretty expensive. But you have it. Hmm. I do have it. Yeah, I got it in, uh, in an old Craigslist deal. Nice. But, um, yeah, so I was doing my, my trip around Canada, and just <coughs> separately I had messaged Eric because I knew he was working on Inquisitor stuff. I was like, I, I have some Inquisitors. Do you want Do you want any of these? Like, I've got some old models that I'm not using mm-hmm. for, and I, I knew he had been working on it. And he's like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. If you're willing to to send them over to me, so he gave me his address. I'm like, uh, I'm actually driving by your house next week. Uh, maybe I should just stop by. <laughs> it's even better. You're like, actually, I'm uh, down the street. Like I, I knew he was in. I knew he was in Canada somewhere, but it's even I, better. Yeah, I was legitimately looking for his mailing address, yeah. and he gives it to me. It's like, oh, wait, uh, I'll just bring him yeah. over. <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. And, but yeah, I, I got there. He had a beautiful board set up for Inquisitor. So some of it was repurposed Necromunda terrain. Some of it was stuff that he had made specifically for this larger scale. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was just very well thought out to give the aesthetic vibes that he wanted, but also to have uh, very logically placed uh, catwalks and stairways and you know computer terminals mm-hmm. for like little like places of interest to get to and hack into nice uh, so that was awesome and he also had uh, a total i we well, had more than 10 inquisitor models painted up but he had two teams of five ready for us to go mm-hmm. and i did it I read a <laughs> solid chunk of this book the the night before I showed up at Eric's house. I love how you have like sticky notes popping out the side of that thing. <laughs> you have That's to. Amazing. You have to. Okay, so <laughs> I, I was telling you that Ash and I played a game of Relic Blade, just no cuts, right? Yeah, straightforward in half an hour, and like it went smoothly. Yeah. This Inquisitor is not that game. <laughs> it's the opposite of that game. <laughs> yeah, it's... I want to talk about it just as, like, like a relic of the kind of yeah. games that were out there and still kind of are mm-hmm. out there. The density of this game is... Like, it makes me smile in a perverse right. way. It is... <laughs> it is nutty how granular this stuff mm-hmm. is and i i, I want to share like a few examples with you here to to, to try <laughs> just yeah <laughs> just to, to give you just a tiny bit of the experience so the the rest of the story is neither eric nor i had played this game before oh, okay and so we were both like okay since i'm going to be around let's both try to learn it we will muddle through it together We'll take as long as it takes. We'll, it will do all night if we have to to get through this game. So you got through like a and couple of turns, and <laughs> yeah, I think we, I think we ended after like four right. turns, something like all that, right. um, maybe maybe five. But okay, so maybe maybe I can talk about shooting, and I can try to tell you what I remember about yeah. the shooting. Okay, rules. so we'll zoom in. Giant board, yeah, and I mean Eric makes uh-huh. giant, really nice boards, right? So zoom in, yes. 54 millimeter model, so twice the height of your standard MIDI. And mm-hmm. it's the shooting phase, if you can call it that. What do you have to do in order to shoot the gun equipped to your Inquisitor? All right. You, first of all, this is a D100 based system. Wow, that's already too much for most people. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, I have a couple of sets of D hundred dice, so it's it's two D tens, mm-hmm. but one has a zero after everything. Mm-hmm. And so the the way that sort of system generally works is 
you'll have a ballistic skill, a BS of 70, for example. And so the idea is if you roll your D100 and you get a score equal to or less than 70, that's a success. So that means, so, so that means like if you have a BS of 80, it is easier to roll 80 and below than it is to roll 70 sure. and below. And so that, that part of it is actually logical and intuitive. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Now let's talk about the rest of the shooting. <laughs> yeah. roles. You're like, okay, I can do that. Moving on to okay. the yeah. <laughs> okay, you have to specify whether your character is left-handed or right-handed, or there's a special characteristic that you like, a special trait you can take for ambidextrous. Oh. <laughs> so if you are, so the game works on a series of actions and so depending on how much initiative your character mm -hmm. has you might be able to take like five or six actions when you activate your character on your turn and so the the way the game works is there's um, an initiative score and so you basically go around the character with the highest initiative goes first and it's not like alternating activations it's just going in initiative order right, through right. Um, all of the characters that are on the board. And anyway, based on how fast your character is, you might be able to do a certain number of actions when you activate your character. And so an action could be drawing your pistol. Okay. An action could be ejecting the magazine, putting a fresh magazine in. It could be uh, you can aim your pistol as an action for a plus 20% bonus to hit. Oh, sure. You can spend another action aiming even harder oh, for like, an extra like twenty percent. Close, close the one hit. eye, <laughs> like just yeah. yeah close the. You eye. can do it. You can do it a total of three times if you wow. want. If you want, you can say, "I choose to draw my pistol, aim one, two, three times, uh, and oh, then okay. and then uh, take as many firing actions." as I mean, I, I can, could, like, I could see how that would that would play do. out in terms yeah. of like, yeah. E Oh, you know, they drew their their weapon. They, you know, aimed down the sights, closed one eye, took a breath, and then fired. Held yeah, it. you know what I mean. Yes. So it's like that. That yeah. kind of makes sense. Like you would become more accurate the more calm and like deliberate you were in that shot. So yep. sure, okay. Yep, I like it. You can get an extra. You can get an extra ten percent bonus to your ballistic skill if you rest the weapon Ooh. on on something. So if you're behind like cover, on, you on, get on top a of bonus a wall yeah. or something like that. Well, if you take the time to rest your weapon on the cover. <laughs> right, yes. exactly, yeah. Of course, you have to you have to make sure to do that. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right. So, so there there are some bonuses you can give yourself for for lining up your weapon. That's cool. like, again, like, you know, depending on where you're at, what else is going on, if you're hanging off of a ladder, clearly. You know, maybe you're maybe you're not able to use your favored <laughs> side hand. Right, right. If you have to if you have to use your off hand to try to shoot your pistol, that's a minus 20% right. bonus if you're trying you to shoot concentrate real hard. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. So there's there's a lot going into this. Now, of course, weapons have a weight and your character has a strength. <laughs> there's encumbrance and in this. And if game. that weight stat is higher than your strength stat, there's uh you know a negative modifier on your ability to shoot that gun. So if Fair you can't enough. Even Fair pick enough. it up to aim, then you're not gonna do much. Yeah. 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 Now, now maybe you were smart in building your character and made sure that your character <laughs> was smart enough for the weapons you gave them. But <laughs> hey, you could maybe maybe they took up. some negative modifiers during the game. Yeah. You know, maybe they took some injuries. Maybe oh, they yeah. got hit by some darts or something. So this is all stuff you gotta keep in mind. Okay, so that's that that's the the very basics of shooting. Now let's let's say the character you're shooting at moved last turn. But you gotta standard, remember that. Sure. If the character you're shooting at moved last turn, you subtract two percent per inch they moved last turn. So <laughs> per inch. Got to stay on top of this stuff. Yeah. yeah. So you, not only do you need like reference sticky notes, but you need a notepad to like mark down every turn so that you know that you moved X model 14 inches last turn. Uh-huh. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. And then, yeah, that'd be a, a minus 28 to hit. Yeah. So. Right. That makes sense. 
two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See, you're getting the hang I, of it already. I feel, the hang I of it feel already. like I'm in the game. I feel right there. Good. Yeah. Good. All right. So if you have, um, if you're making a shot, mm-hmm. the other thing you need to consider is range. Okay. Yeah. Now that's that's standard. Yeah. yeah. I mean that yeah. makes sense. That How makes far sense. Away is your target? Uh, lots of games. Lots of games will have like long or short range, right. something like that. Right. Yeah. Which is is perfectly reasonable. Now this game, every distance has a unique modifier and it and it goes in five inch segments okay. zero to five inches has a modifier five to ten or six to ten eleven to fifteen and so on and so forth and i think that it makes goes sense. all the way up to like you know 100 and whatever so like the, the like standard it, 40k is like at half the the range you get like double shots or something i don't know if they do that anymore um and then the full range is like a single shot or whatever the the thing is so there's like only two but this has one every five inches yeah and so if you look uh if you're looking at your weapon Mm -hmm. stats so if you look at the the stats for like a bolter or something or or a las gun or what have you the you know it'll talk about the damage that the weapon does it'll have the weight so that you can calculate whether or not you're strong (laughs) enough to wield it effectively and then it'll have the range characteristic and the range isn't a number. Like, it doesn't say it's a 48-inch range. Oh. The range is a letter. <laughs> so, for okay. example, you could have range E or range F. Okay. And the way you the way you figure that in is you go to the range modifier table. Right, and right. And you look up what a range F does, and then... What's a, what, is, you, what does a range F do? Just so we're on the same page. Uh, well, there's no negative modifiers up to 21 inches. Okay. But after 21 inches, there starts to negative that makes modifiers sense. start to apply. That makes sense. Actually, range F is a pretty good. That's a pretty good weapon, right? I mean, yeah, that's 21 the kind of inches you with have. no penalties. Like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, once you hit 21 inches, you get a minus 15 penalty. Uh, 31 inches minus 30, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. 41 inches minus 45. If you're at 66 inches, that's a minus 105% penalty. So you <laughs> better have been aiming with that weapon <laughs> right. braced up against some cover. You know what I'm saying? Somehow roll like yeah. a one. I hope for the yeah. best. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you actually just brought up a really good point, Casey. Mm. Now, if you roll a one... Yeah. Uh, I think there is the like auto success in this game, or for many of the roles in this game, have I do. An auto I do success. like that in a game yeah. where where yeah. you know a six yeah. is a crit all the time. You know what I mean, or or a one in this case, sure. whatever, whichever direction sure. they're going. I, I think it's I think it's like one to five is an automatic success, right. which is you know rolling a twenty on a d twenty, yeah. um, and ninety six to a hundred is normally automatic failure. Rolling mm-hmm. a one on a d twenty. Now, the way this is phrased is if you are at 10% or below of the number you needed in order to hit the character. Mm-hmm. So let's just, let's for ease of, of uh, the example, let's say your ballistic skill 80 and all of the modifiers on all the range, the moving characters, the aiming, the bracing, mm-hmm. the weight, the, the handedness. Let's say all those modifiers cancel out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that we're a BS80, and so you just need a, an 80 or below to, to hit the, your target. Sure. Now, 10% of 80 is 8. And so if you actually roll an 8 or below... Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is an, that's a... Oh, I forget the term. Picked target or aimed shot or something. Something like, you did good. Yeah, yeah. you did good. Now, let me explain you did, you did good. Okay, okay. Yeah. So we, we haven't even got to the resolution of God, the shot yeah. yet. It's fascinating. So if you, hit, if you hit your enemy, you roll another D100 to see where you hit them. Okay. Left leg, right leg, groin, abdomen, chest, right arm, left you need, arm, You need head. to know. This is like vats from freaking Fallout. That's what this is. Uh-huh. It's random. Uh-huh. It's all random. And of course, <laughs> and the way the way cover works is, you know, if you're peeking out a window, 
That means that everything except your head, your chest, and your left arm is, you know, has an extra layer of armor. I see, I see. Uh, for, and, and so they actually have diagrams for every position your character could be in oh and which body parts are exposed and right, which body right. parts have a little bit of cover in that situation. Honestly, visualizing that system in my head makes this make a lot more sense. Yeah. So, th I mean, this level of granularity, like all of this makes sense. And it is also ridiculous that yeah. you're sitting there at the table trying <laughs> like, to do these calculations okay. for every action. Forty two percent that I will shoot yeah. you in the groin. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go for that. And I'm gonna take extra time right. to look down that scope a little bit harder. <laughs> add ten percent so that adds two to my roll. I have a mm -hmm. E grade weapon, therefore you're you like, the hang of yeah. it. Yeah. Like, at the end of the day, I shot your toe off and you lost one hit point. Yes. Yeah, Eric and I did that for like six <laughs> hours and it was great. It was great. I think I think there comes a point with, with games like, I mean, because I, I know that you don't particularly like reading rule books, right? But it, if you not. can get into something that is just overly complicated and there are people who are willing to go the distance, like I, I 100% see why you would want to do that like the amount of variety and longevity and and even like role playing in a game like that is almost infinite like mm -hmm. there there's such a system that it becomes like like D, &D right there's kind of something for everything there's there's a mm -hmm. way to resolve something that you want to do so i can definitely see the appeal and if you have people to go in with you then yeah, I think that that's the kind of game I would triple down on. But it would have to be probably yeah. the only game. <laughs> you know, like all other games are dead to me. It is Inquisitor for Agreed. Life, 54 millimeters or nothing. Agreed. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I do not like reading rule books. We've been over this many times. But actually, when I was <laughs> reading this in preparation for the game... The fact that it's a 22-year-old rule book, mm -hmm. that GW is not changing the rules or adding addendums every couple of months, Asterix, but that yeah. they're not trying to sell me a new book every year, a new edition every three years. I have the Inqui I have the Inquisitor rule book, and it, you know, if I get the order of operations and all those stat modifiers down, and I remember to check how far the character moved last turn when I'm calculating how hard they are to hit, mm -hmm. like that's in my brain. That's something I have now. That's like right. The, the tables like reading, are static. Yeah. Like they're not changing at any any time. You're you're right. done. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And so part of me was like, okay, this is worth learning. <laughs> right. kind of. Somehow it's more <laughs> worth it. Yeah. <laughs> well because hey if uh, uh if you show up somewhere and you need to, to throw down on a game of inquisitor you're gonna be like well i know that that an f weapon is 21 inches so that's mm -hmm. never gonna change <laughs> exactly yeah. yeah it's not like wait how do rapid fire weapons work this 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 edition this yes, edition exactly that's what i is this still a heavy weapon earlier. can i move and fire with heavy weapons this edition or how, how does that work yeah, no one knows. I literally don't Some people know. know. It's not important. Though. A lot of people. Um, <laughs> all right. Look, yeah. if I needed an 80 on my ballistic skill shot and I got eight or below, I could modify the position where the hit landed on the character by up to 20%. Oh. So if I roll for position and I got a 30 which is like a leg shot. Oh, you could go up. I could the, move yeah. that up to like a 42, which is a groin shot ah, and much funnier. I mean, yeah. look, if you're going to do it again yeah. in fallout, like if you're not shooting for the groin every time, you're not playing it right. <laughs> yeah. Look, I, I'm not going to spoil the result of Eric's and I's game. Oh, uh, like he might put it in content sure. later, but, um, well, okay. Did you make that? I, shot? I, I was yeah. able I hit I hit a character in the groin with a fireball, um, stunning him for three turns. Oh, that sounds good. And separately, I was able to use a power fist to Eisenhorn's groin, 
uh, <laughs> causing him to pass out for the rest of the game. <laughs> I don't think we need the video to see who, who won here. I don't even care how it ended. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and the rules, I mean, it, it's not like the, the DM was doing something funny. Like, oh, right, you got, right. oh, you got a 20. That means you hit him in the groin and he passed right. out. Good job. It's like, I'm following the charts uh okay we you okay i hit you in the groin we roll for damage mm -hmm. we consult your toughness you have a consciousness uh number here damage exceeded your conscious notice number you pass out yeah <laughs> you you are no longer awake uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just writhing on the ground yeah. grasping and so <laughs> Yeah, the, the rule book itself leads you to exactly what happened, and some of the results could be pretty funny. I so. mean, yeah. No, the, that's the kind of stuff. You get that weird, like, little nuances, the, the like, jokes that they wrote in deep into the rule set, right? It's like, y you go through five charts, and turns out I hit you so hard that in the groin that you passed out for the, the rest of the game. Yeah. yeah that's funny. Yeah. And they made that work, like, with, with dice rolls. Yeah. Right. It's good. And, uh, you know, for fun, I had one character who was running around on catwalks and standing in stupid positions. <laughs> and Eric used telekinesis to throw a barrel at him and get him to fall into a vat of acid. <laughs> I mean, that, yeah, I was, I was playing to leave something like that open. Yeah. But uh, it worked. It worked. The, he, uh... We assigned a value for the weight of those barrels. We did the calculation to see whether he was able to lift the barrel. We did the calculation to see how far it would knock my character back. <laughs> and uh, it was enough. And two turns later, he crawled out of the vat of acid and started putting on makeup for we some reason. We didn't look up the special s swimming rules. I'm actually not super sure how that. <laughs> he was a servitor, so he only oh, had the one okay. arm. And, and, and his other arm was a very heavy uh, melting so gun. So he sank to the bottom. I think he was at the bottom. Of I that mean, thing. I would think that that at least just hypothetically, okay. You know how people always argue about the ending of T two when Arnold dips below the the molten. Yeah, yeah, yeah thumbs up, right? Like, well, well technically, he he would still be. He could have just been standing in there for a minute. You know, like it's not like he would have just melted immediately. Would have taken a minute, okay. right? So that's the whole thing. It's like, yeah, it's a, it's a cool moment, but like he he probably was fine for a while. I don't know about that. I feel like I might I might be on the other side of this argument here. I don't know. It's a, it's a thing. The internet's anyway. My thinking is in this case, if it's a vat of acid, like you would have to somehow determine what kind of acid it was, what mm -hmm. kind of metal the servitor is made of. To mm -hmm. see if, you know, it was going to melt it and how quickly. I feel like this is right up your, your alley here. <laughs> um, and then if he was, if he could survive long enough to shoot the gun through the bottom of the container Ooh. to then mm. empty that acid and get out. That would have been good. Right. But I mean, technically doable in this system, right? Yeah, that's that's cool. Eric and I had just struggled through the telekinesis <laughs> sure, yeah. rules, and we were not up for the <laughs> swimming like swimming or with one handed. Discharge yeah, of that sounds yeah. like uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the fact that that you could uh, yeah. theoretically go down that road is kind of awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a ton of work to try to adjudicate that game. But it's one of those things that seemed like it did have some real payoff. Mm -hmm. A ton of work to have a entirely different scale of terrain and models cool, to man. work with. Uh, but again, there was some payoff there. And, and I'm glad Eric and I both played our first game of Inquisitor. <laughs> that so. is cool. Um, yeah. Yeah, I've got the, the digital rule books because there is technically a living rule book that is updated or was at least updated um by one of the original authors 
So, mm. or approved by and looked over. So, uh, as far as I know, there are some some things that made it a little bit easier to to handle those kinds of things. I don't know by how much or what, but um, yeah, it's out there. So you don't actually have to go buy it, which is kind of nice. I mean, it is. It's nice that there are still people like keeping these things alive. I guess. Yeah, it is. It is. There, there was a special charm to it. I'll give it that. Yeah. I think it's back when Games Workshop had a division called Specialty Games, that put out specialty games. Yeah. Well, it was certainly back when they listed the authors and contributors <laughs> inside the rule books. I'll Written tell you that. By, a, yeah. Yeah. Gav Thorpe and then a whole bunch of other names we recognize. But yeah. Eric Eric is more into knowing the the pantheon of GW authors than I yeah. am. Yeah. But uh, yeah. yeah. Of course, he also knows like <laughs> the the like three different sculptors who worked on the miniatures in this line is like uh, I like. I like this yeah. guy's stuff better than this guy. It's like, <laughs> all right, okay. Like, they they kind of look the same to me, <laughs> yeah. but cool, cool, cool. Kind of the idea, but yeah. No, there definitely are those those sculptors that have been around and people have done things, yeah. Yeah, all right, so that's Inquisitor. <laughs> that's pretty sweet. I kind of want to play it yeah. now. How was, your, <laughs> how was your trip to the zoo? Yeah. You got that written down. I did, I did. Casey. So I went to the Sacramento Zoo over last yep. last weekend, whatever. Um, had a pretty good time. It's not like the, the biggest zoo in the world, but they uh, they have a, a... I don't remember where they got it from, but they somebody rescued like a white rhino from somewhere, and it came to the Sacramento Zoo. And thought, oh, yeah, that's pretty neat. You know, white rhino. There's like, there's not a lot of those left. There's like seven yeah, of them? Yeah, some there's, stupid there's thing like that, right? Yeah, yeah, so there's not a lot left. I, I've obviously never seen one. Um, so, yeah, we took a trip down. Um, visited some family and hung out. But uh, kind of got me thinking, like, zoos are, like, zoos have always been kind of weird. Like, you only ever remember a couple of things from a zoo. Um, like, I remember when I was really, really little, I remember seeing alligators at a zoo. And that that's, that's like, it. That's all I had was that, that memory for a long time. Um, then I went to the San Diego Zoo, and all I remember is monkeys just loudly going to town on themselves in front of people mostly children. It was terrifying. Like, and of course, you know, this, this trip to the zoo, uh, didn't disappoint in that, in that respect. Um, I actually did take some pictures of some really cool frogs. Cause I thought, Hey, if I'm going to paint mm -hmm. some like lizardy skin, these are like actual good references. Way to tie right, it in. Right. Got to paint painting miniatures. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh, um, uh -huh. but, but the thing that I took away from this trip was I, we went to the chimpanzees, you know, had, had my daughter in the stroller. My son was walking with us and my wife was like, Oh, the chimps are out. They're out. Like cause they were, they were kind of hiding earlier in the day. It was, it was kind of hot, but they were taking a nap or something. I don't know. They were out, they were hanging on these branches and we were watching this one, you know, and, and he kind of swings down and he's looking at us, looking around and he just, he kind of like, he's doing some weird stuff with his hand. He's like got his hand behind his back and he, he kind of turns around and he just kind of like places his, his palm over his butthole <laughs> and just soft serves himself as just a big old pile of crap and proceeds to just take large, large bites out of it just over and over. And he's like picking the leaves out and I'm dying, right? I'm just <laughs> dying of laughter. <laughs> <laughs> and my wife is next to me literally gagging about to throw up and I'm, I, it's like this back and forth of like she's like I can't I can't look and she's gagging right 
And then she looks back and the monkey just, just another large bite and just picks a, a, a leaf out of his teeth. It was amazing. So, I mean, I like zoos, but like that's, that's all he, that ever he hanging happens. from the branch? Yes, he's hanging from this branch and he's got one hand under his butthole and he's just like scooping it. And I, I thought at first like, oh, maybe he's going to like fling it, right? Because sure. You know, chimpanzees and monkeys and stuff. But no, right, no, right. he 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 went for it. And I mean, I'm sure it's it's a pretty normal thing. He's like undigested leaves, right? Because they're just eating these leaves off these these plants. That they're yeah, you don't have to make excuses for the I monkey. I don't, but man. Or the great ape yeah, apologies. Right. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah. He's not a great ape. A chimpanzee, it's a, le- it's a lesser chimpanzee ape, is. right? Something like that. He's a primate. Yeah, primate. Doing that. Yeah. Very funny though. Probably one of the funniest things I've seen at a zoo. Um, and the fact that it made it was made more funny because my wife was trying not to throw up. It was it was great. I've been married long enough that uh, her doing that it, it made it so much better. <laughs> <laughs> You wanted to go to the zoo, right? right? This is <laughs> well. This is this is this animals like a, for a, you. Yeah. Uh, observe the wild animals. <laughs> observe them. <laughs> this is the what beauty they of do. nature. That's exactly what it is. The beauty of nature. The majesty <laughs> yeah. of the natural world. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Oh, to be fair, uh, red pandas are pretty cool. Just throwing it out there. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pretty neat. Oh, it's a pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I went to the zoo. I also bought a board game. <laughs> so I've been meaning to play uh, Mice and Mystics. Uh, it's a board game that was on like Will Wheaton's tabletop and stuff. Looks really fun. Simple. Mm-hmm. Cool models. You know, um, but the same company made this other game. It's like, uh, it's called Stuffed Fables. It's kind of like a Toy Story esque story that you play through, um, where you're like the stuffed animals on this kid's bed. Kid goes to sleep, and you have to fight off nightmares and this wizard and some stuff. Really cool. Um, haven't played it yet, but I took everything out, and like the models are really good. Like yeah. they're they're still the PVC, but uh like pretty decent quality. And like the scopes look cool. So I might actually end up painting this board game. Just cause it's it's All so right. different. Uh I think it would also help to like playing. Seems like it would be cool to see everything painted up. So yeah, it's one of those that, that you like open the book and the book leads you through how to play. And then, and mm-hmm. then you turn the page, and it's the next map, and you know, grid, and all the stuff you have to do. So, um, I'm noticing more and more that like games like that are definitely more appealing than like you know, Inquisitor level, you know, charts and <laughs> tables and stuff. Like, give me, give me the simple. I want the simple stuff. Yeah, that's what I've been up to. All right. All right. Yeah. I don't know. I uh I did some nad shading with Dana. <laughs> Dana Howe. We did some uh reverse zenithal, anti zenithal, yeah. nadiral undershot shading. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. We'll make a video on it. You'll you'll hear more. You'll as hear long more. as you call it something. There's nad shading in the actual Yeah. I don't know if you, you, it's too late now. You're not in Canada anymore, so. Uh, we'll do it all in post. Oh. We'll do it all in post. Even better. Yeah. Even. Or just have, have the text crawl across the screen. <laughs> Nad. Nad. Shading. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't yeah. land so, it on that So one. that went well, and, and Dave and I also shot a, a full video on painting up giant ravage yeah. star oh, minis. They're giant. I did not yeah. realize they were so giant. I thought they were just well, the, the regular. They are not. They are regular size, 
but since they have STLs and 3D printers, two hundred percent. They just they, yeah, yeah. I think I think it was three hundred percent. I'm not a hundred. I'm not sure. I mean, that but, looks that looks bigger than an Inquisitor model. So, gotta yeah, be three hundred. I think it's th- I think it's three hundred percent. And so that's what we did. We printed off some of his upcoming Ravage Star minis at three hundred percent size and spent a couple of days painting them. And that'll be a video we don't need to get too deep into it. And uh, Dana and I made a video. So lovely trip to Canada. Lots of good hobby folks up there. Mm-hmm. And uh, Jeremy, we'll, <laughs> we'll see you one of these days. Oh, Black Magic Craft. Right. He, he's we'll he's deep in, we'll the, in the, the, the northern forest, you know. <laughs> I mean, I think Winnipeg is a, a metropolitan I'm area. I'm sure it but, is. Uh, <laughs> I'm never getting yeah. out there. So. <laughs> I'm never going there. Well, the good news is he's uh, he's coming to Adepticon this, this next year, right? Yeah, that's what, that's he, what says. he says. That's mm-hmm. what he says. So we'll hold him to it. I mean, well, I don't know if we can. I'm not going to Winnipeg to try and make him. That's right. That's true. We can't make him. We can't make him. Yeah. <laughs> well. On that yeah. note. Thank you again for joining us on another episode of Paint Bravely. If you enjoyed this podcast, please help us out by leaving us a review on iTunes, subscribing to the YouTube channel, and sharing this message with your hobby friends. And as always, we appreciate each and every one of you for listening, and we will talk to you next time. Talk to you next time.